student employee. Yeah. Yeah. In the future. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get ready to introduce, but if you are not, um, if, if you can have your microphone muted whenever you're not speaking again, we will have some opportunities for people to speak, but sometimes if too many of us. Oh, okay. Sam says it's muted. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I thought I was seeing some that were um, unmuted, but I might be wrong because I uh, have been wrong once or twice before. All right. <laughs> so my name's Jenny Dale. I'm the information literacy coordinator at UNCG Libraries, if you don't know. Um, I proposed this uh, initiative, this University Libraries Virtual Learning Community, um, as a way to not only promote some peer learning and peer professional development, but to build some community. Um, within our libraries um, during the current COVID-19 pandemic. So many of us are working remotely, and my big hope is that this project will help everyone sort of continue to learn and share even when we are working at a social distance. So if you would like to find the archived recording of this session later uh, or see what else we have scheduled, which we are adding new stuff, I've added several things today that are going to be in uh, rotation next week. Um, so you can always visit the uh, LibGuide at uncg.libguides.com slash ULVLC, and you can learn more about uh, the project and how you can kind of indicate your interest at that link. So I'm just going to go over a couple of logistics real quick. This is a discussion, so it's a little bit different than a typical presentation, although Lois will be doing some presenting. So if you'll please make sure your audio is muted during the presentation. Um, again, as we've said, but you can always turn your audio back on um, whenever there are times that like Lois has set aside for us to have discussions. You definitely don't have to have a microphone. You can always use the text chat, um, which you should be able to see down at the bottom of your screen where there's like a little chat bubble. Um, if you have questions throughout our discussion, you can always put those in the chat. Um, especially if it's while Lois is, is talking or while someone else is talking, but if you're like me, you might have a sort of brilliant question and then you are afraid you're going to forget, you can use the chat. If you have any tech issues, please feel free to email Sam at slharlow at uncg.edu and she can help guide you through some solutions. Um, but in the worst case scenario, if something happens, the audio goes out or something weird is happening, um, let us know, but if we aren't able to get it back online for you, this will be recorded. Um, so you will be able to go back. Like Sam said, participant data won't be included, but the conversations, um, especially those verbal conversations, will still be there. Um, so before I introduce Lois, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Again, please feel free to put questions in the chat anytime. So I am super excited to present our second University Libraries Virtual Learning Community session, which is being hosted by the uh, by Lois Barnes Vincent, who is the uh, Access Services Assistant Desk Manager, and she's going to be talking about and kind of giving us some discussion on student employee training. So I'm very excited, and I'm going to turn it over to Lois. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, if you can't hear me or if you want me to speak up, speak more slowly, anything like that, just send something in the chat so that way I know what I need to do. So I'm really glad everybody is here today. Um, I hope you're all comfy. I have tea and I've got a fuzzy blanket. So um, we just kind of wanted to get together and have a chance to talk about a big part of my job and also I know a lot of other people's jobs. So talking about student employee training to start off, um, just in case you don't know who I am, um, here's a giant picture of my head. My name is Lois Barnes Vinson. I am one of the assistant circulation desk managers um, for access services. In total, I have a little bit more than seven years student employee supervision experience, both at this job and also at my previous job at School of the Arts. And I included a picture of one of my very first work study students at School of the Arts. Um, we had unintentionally dressed similarly. And so we took a little picture um, and I just kind of threw that in there for fun. She's doing really well. She's married and has kids now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no. Uh. 
Um, <laughs> and then in addition to working with students, um, I was also a student employee at Jackson Library when I was in college and I also worked in the registrar's office. So I had some experience with it from being a student employee as well. And then uh, finally, I'm an education nerd. I went to UNCG to be a high school English teacher and I did my student teaching and realized, okay, maybe being a classroom teacher isn't the right thing for me, but I definitely still love education and wanted to work in an education setting and having that student employee background, um, I knew that working in a college was something that I was interested in and it just sort of turned into a real job. So that's sort of who I am and why I'm talking about this today. Okay, so, um, for today's discussion, I kind of came up with some key points to go over um, things that we probably all kind of encounter with student employee training. So the first one is just what we do. Um, I know what I do in access services and what the rest of us do in access services, but I'm not 100% sure what everybody else does. We might be doing totally different things. We might be doing similar things. Um, usually what we'll happen is I will kind of give an overview of what we do in my department and that will give y'all a chance to write things out in the chat or to kind of think about your response or things that you want to bring up and then I'll turn it over to y'all so you can kind of respond. Um, and then after we've hired students and we've trained them, um, we've got the training to working transition. So what happens once the job starts in earnest? Um, do things usually go really well? Do they go really badly? Are there hiccups that we all kind of experience? Kind of thinking about that part of the process. And then future of training. Um, this is a point where I'll talk a little bit more about what our department is doing with our Canvas training. And we are trying to go from reading stuff off of checklists a lot of times to making things more interactive and a little bit more updated and better for students. Um, to learn as they're going through. Um, and then sticking points. So this isn't a, um, a venting kind of session or a gossiping session, um, and it is being recorded and I don't think anybody would wanna watch back people complaining, but um, obviously we do have issues and we do run into problems. And so this is a chance for us to kind of talk through that, say what are the common issues that we run into with student training, either actually training the students or trying to set up the training or once they start working. And then um, maybe others in our kind of similar situation can give ideas or say things that they have done in ways that they've worked around issues or just lend a sympathetic ear so that we all know we're kind of in this together. And then finally, I included a potpourri section. So that way, if we missed something that you really wanted to talk about, or if we touched on something and you want to go back and hit it again, we can do that there. Or if you have something else you want to talk about, it might not be um, exactly related to student employee training. Um, it might be a little bit more tangential, but it could be sort of germane. And that's a good point for you to bring that up. All right, so if everything looks like it's working okay, I'm gonna go on to the next slide. Sorry, I sometimes I get little pop-ups from the chat and sometimes I don't. And so if I look to the side, that's what I'm looking at. And I'll also, full discretion, my cat is in the room and she's been really good today and it's been mostly just staring at the window. Um, but if she does come up on the desk, you might see me kind of toss her off to the side. So <laughs> FYI. Okay, all right, so we're all here. So if you just wanna take a chance, um, say hi and introduce yourself, you know, hey, it's me. Um, I think for most people, I can see your name in the participant thing, um, but if you just wanna say hi briefly and then what brought you here today? Um, are you interested in talking about what you do with student employee training? Um, do you, and interact with students, but you're not directly related to training them? Are you just trying to fill up your work day? That's totally fine. Don't feel like you can't participate. Everyone is welcome if they have something that they want to talk about. I'm glad you're here. 
And then if there's any kind of like burning questions or topics that you really want to talk about, um, this discussion is for us. So you can either go ahead and type that in the chat and we'll try to make sure that we hit it at some point or um, at the end when we get to that potpourri section, you can bring it up then. So I'll give people a chance to kind of type in the chat. Let's see. Very cool. Yay. Yeah. I know, I know um, a little bit about what folks do in other departments just from working on different committees and being on this student supervisor committee, um, but I'm also always really interested to see what other people do and also what people do at other institutions. Um, we, I'm on an, an Internal departmental committee for student training. And um, we try to get responses from other UNC system libraries about what they do with their students. And we had a really, really hard time getting any kind of um, feedback from that. So I appreciate the opportunity to even just work together with other departments. Okay, cool. I'm just kind of reading everybody's chats. Um, interested in learning what other departments do. Um, working in admin here because you're curious. Hello. Um, Rachel wants to get more supervisory experience, but there's not many opportunities. That may be something that we can look at. I don't know if other departments would be interested in having people shadow or working across departments. I see somebody put up there. Um, yeah, Leanne, wondering what the training looks like in other departments. Curious. Orientation. Yes, orientation. I'm sorry, it's not very fun to listen to me read things. Um, <laughs> orientation is a really good um, point because the library does the big orientation in the fall every year, and then we kind of split off and do our own thing. And in doing research about what other schools do, um, not necessarily for library student employees, um, but for just student employees in college in general, a lot of what's out there that I'm able to find in articles is about having, you know, a fall orientation and a spring orientation and checking back in with people. And I think that's something that we've thought about, at least in my department for a while, but haven't been able to figure out the logistics of it. Um, I will say access services is kind of a unique situation because we do have multiple components within access services and then we are also in the building typically 24 5 and a standard kind of school year situation so keeping the library open and staffed for that long involves a lot of students and it's a little bit more than other places um but that's not to say that we couldn't do another orientation or that we can do more um sort of things for the students it's just sometimes Places with fewer students have an easier time doing that. All right, so it looks like no idea student employee professional development even existed. Well, Rachel, <laughs> we will be happy to tell you more about that. And in fact, I have that in the resources tab later. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'm really glad that you're all here today. We can kind of chat about this together. So. For the first kind of discussion topic, what do we do? So um, you just hired a new student employee. What happens next? Um, other than just the kind of paperwork shuffle that we all go through, um, typically when a student turns in um, or gives us their I-9 card and we make a copy of that, that's when things really start moving on our end. Uh, for every student employee we have, I create a folder for them, and on that folder is a hiring checklist, and that helps me make sure I get everything done that I need to. Um, and at that point, I add the students into our email contacts. I also add them to Remind, which if you're not familiar with Remind is a, I'm not sure what the best thing to call it is, but it's a website that you can use to um, send 
student employees or they use it a lot in K-12 schools as well, you can send a message and it will show up on the recipient's phone like a text or just in their app. And so that way it's an easy way to kind of send out mass texts or send out communications to your students without having to actually text them, um, which can be kind of dicey sometimes. So it's really helpful. We've been trying to use it more um, and we could even up, like up our usage of it some more. Um, but the good thing is a lot of the students are really familiar with it, especially um, in the past couple of years as we've had freshmen come in, they've used it in school. And so that's a nice little quick way to send out messages to students. Then we also add them to our Canvas course. And um, in that Canvas course, uh, right now it's definitely a work in progress, but the first module is um, pre-training information. Yeah, Remind can be really useful. And it's nice too, because they can like chat you right back. So that's helpful. Um, but in our Canvas course, we I send them a message and I tell them that they can review the module before they start training. And that way it gives them kind of an idea of what they're gonna be doing. All of our student employees start off with Stacks training, whether or not they're gonna just be working in Stacks or also work at the desk. Everybody has to have Stacks training first because it's the fundamentals of working in the library, at least in our department. And so that first section will introduce you to things like the Library of Congress, call number system, and we made a welcome video that is finally up um, uh, introducing students to our departments and then the departments that we most frequently interact with. And it's just kind of like good basic information that they can have already seen before they come in to their first day of stacks training and it might give them an idea of what's going on. Uh, and so I'm so used to having a double monitor and I just have a laptop screen, which I'm very thankful for. But if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my phone, um, at my notes and trying to make that work as my double monitor, I apologize. Okay, so yay. All right, so we've added them in to the Canvas course. They come in. Tammy is our, Tammy Williams is our SACS manager and she schedules uh, their first stacks trainings and she will pair them up the trainings with a lead student when possible. That's something that we try to do in our department all the time is have lead student employees who are student employees who've been there a little bit longer and had a chance to move into a leadership role, teach their peers how to do the job so that way it's not quite as intimidating. Um, usually they schedule it out um, around about two weeks, but it kind of depends on everybody's schedule. And then also when you get to the point where you're shelving the books, if you make mistakes, you have to redo it. Um, so that can also take up some time. If the students are going to remain in stacks, once training is finished, Tammy will add them to their permanent schedule and they'll begin work. If they are going to come to the desk, Alex um, Brennan, who is here today, yay, Alex, uh, sets up the training schedule. And again, usually she schedules the trainees over two weeks with lead students doing the training. Currently we have 13 modules um, for training, which is a lot. We split one of um, our modules in half. And then we also have a scavenger hunt. We have scenarios that the leads go over with the students and then shadowing time built in where they can kind of work at the desk up to the point that they've gotten in their training and see what it's really like to work at the desk as well. Once they are done with all of their training um, at the desk, then Marilyn typically schedules a meeting with each trainee. And if she's not there, then Alex or I can do it as well. Um, just to sort of go over some final things, make sure they know what to do if they need to call out, where everything is, um, that kind of stuff. And then we also ask for feedback about the training at that point, um, so that way, if there is anything that was especially good or especially not good, we can kind of know what's going on. Then Marilyn will add them to the weekly desk schedule and I will incorporate them into the weekend schedule, which is the one that I make. After our students are trained, um, I'm not 100% sure about the stacks, but I know at least at the desk, we don't really formally check in with the students. Um, they work at the desk with 
um, staff members during, you know, every time they're working at the desk. And so we'll kind of see how they're doing and staff members might offer feedback or might give them reminders as they're working together, but we don't really have any kind of like, okay, you've been here a week, let's check in or, you know, it's been however many days, that kind of thing. Um, I think Charlie had a question about how much use the handheld Android barcode readers use. Um, I believe that they are using those in the stacks to possibly begin an inventory project. And from what I understand, that's a fairly new thing that they're kind of getting started doing. So I'm not really sure. Amanda probably knows better. Listen to Amanda. Okay. <laughs> um, there was also a question from Leanne. She asked, how do you know if they've made mistakes when they're shopping? That's a really good question. So there are, um, okay, sorry. There are slips of paper in the books on, so they have like specific, a cart full of specific books and they have slips of paper in them. And then when they shelve them, um, I believe it, Amanda or anyone else with stacks, feel free to chime in. Um, I don't remember if they shelve them on their side, but they shelve them and you can see the slips of paper sticking out and then the leads have a chart that they use to check and make sure all the books are in the right place and they count all the runs that are incorrect. And Amanda, feel free to correct me. <laughs> but at least that's how we did it when I was a student and that's how I've kind of seen it happening um, when I've been in and out of the sort room. Does that answer the question? Yay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Rachel also asked a question. I think that might be for everyone um, kind of generally, which was, is there any training that all library student employees have to complete? Um, I know for like the interns, uh, they do not actually have to go to the orientation in the fall semester. Um, we encourage them to but uh, they usually don't because we have uh, a lot of other orientation stuff that they have to do. Um, so I, but I think for any, maybe any undergraduate student assistant, I don't know, I'm curious if SCUA student assistants have to go to that. Um, oh, wow, way to go. Patrick and I are just like right on the same page. Um, so, <laughs> So I think that answer is no, there is not something that everyone has to go to. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. There is a student employees um, customer service look guide that anybody can look at and use those resources about, you know, if their student employees are in a customer service kind of oriented department that you can use. Um, but I don't know if anybody else is required to do that or not. That was a really good question. Thank you. Um, is there anything else? Let me pull up my notes back to where I am. Yeah, I think I think those were all the questions that I saw. But if someone, if I missed one, someone can feel free to put it back in the chat there. Awesome. And then, so we've talked about stacks and we've talked about desk. Even though we're all in access services, we do kind of chunk it up that way. We also have interlibrary loan and Shonda Jackson is the student supervisor in their section. And she, um, I don't remember, I think it's like a little over a year ago now, actually took over um, not just doing the student supervisor part, but also doing the paperwork and things like that, which has been super awesome. And so um, she handles their part. Um, if you wanted to know more about what they do, you could talk to her. I think they have um, a kind of modified stacks training that's more specific to their tasks. And then I know because they only have two students, she works really closely with them um, and all of their kind of job duties. Okay, so that's basically what we do for training. Um, it's kind of the same things we've done for a long time. I know Amanda said that um, the leads uh, go up with students now and show them why the books were shelved in the wrong place. And I think that's really awesome. We're definitely, you know, making sure that all of our processes and procedures are updated when we're doing training, but it is a lot of reading and a lot of reading to the students um, and then doing hands-on as applicable. And that is something that we are trying 
to update. So if anyone else would like to share what you do in your departments, I would love to see what y'all do. Feel free to chat or if you want to take the mic over, go for it. So I can talk about our um, ROI interns. I've mentioned them a couple of times, but if you're not aware, they are mostly LIS graduate students who are in our intern program. Um, and what we do with them is we have an orientation. When I started, when I took over the program, 12 hour orientation where um, went through things like, like techniques like reference interviewing, but we also went through like how to use the catalog, how to use the journal A to Z list, how to use basically the kind of things that we wanted them to know before they like were on the desk for the first time. Um, and then we do weekly trainings with them, but those tend to be or have tended to be. Um, obviously, we're not doing them basically for the rest of the semester, unfortunately, but they have tended to be about either sort of subject specific resources, like, for example, Leah Leninger, health sciences librarian would come in and do one on nursing or health sciences resources. Um, we had, <coughs> excuse me, we've had them do some sessions up in SCUA where they kind of try to understand the different, uh, like the difference between SCUA and ROI um, and like when they would refer someone to SCUA and they kind of go through an exercise with Kathleen usually, but We've changed it a little bit over the years where we've added different sessions that are more about like skills. Um, so, or, or like skills, techniques, trends, that kind of thing. So we had one earlier this semester on, on scholarly communication. Sam did one on OER resources. Um, so we're always kind of trying to morph that training. But an issue that I know we're running into um, is that uh, the orientation has gotten shorter and shorter just because it is really hard to schedule students um, and it, they're all do they all do it together so like when we have six new people or something coming in it's almost impossible to find a time where they can all sit together for four hours or whatever so we have had to shorten it and now it's usually around five hours in person um, and that's pretty significant reduction from that 12 that we've done before I really like what you're describing, Lois, like the kind of thing that y'all do. And I think we could potentially move to a model like that, especially with shadowing, because what I've been finding, especially in the last couple of years, is that even after orientation, our interns are just not ready to be on the desk um, solo. And they just really, um, they, they really, I think, need to be shadowing and seeing these kind of things in practice. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it also just depends on the year. We have our ups and downs. I'm sure y'all do too. That's very true. Sometimes it's student to student, sometimes it's year to year, semester to semester where things can kind of change. And one thing that worked at one point might not work the next time. I think Patrick raised his hand at one point. Patrick, do you want to talk? If not, that's okay too. I'll talk. Um, I was typing. I decided to just type everything, but I will. Um, okay. I will scroll back up and sort of not just read what I was typing. <clears throat> so, um, SCUA does one training, um, pretty much on the onboarding of the student. We did implement for the first time sort of a department specific orientation for both new students and students who were coming back just to make them um, feel more comfortable and to interact with the staff a little bit more. Um, there was a brief refresher on the, the rules and policies of the department, but for the most part, it was just um, a, a welcome orientation. Um, Sam was really critical in helping us move our orientation, our training modules um, online into Canvas. So they used to be in a paper based binder that um, the student, including myself, would just read and it could get very boring and tedious. So um, we walked it over when I when I started, I walked it over into Canvas and um, it covers the first part are mostly departmental and university policies. And the second part are video modules that we pulled from YouTube about different aspects of archival 
processing um, or you know preservation services, any any of that. So it's been really effective and it's really nice because I can rotate students or volunteers or um, interns on and off of that as they come to SCUA and as they leave SCUA. Um, so they retain access to it as long as they're employed with us um, and we can we can refer back to it and we have had to refer back to it sometimes to remind the students like no food or drink remember look back at the the modules um, so it's been I think really positive and I would I do wish like Jenny said I agree I think the the shadowing that you were describing Lois would be really helpful because a lot of our times are even with the modules just reading about processing doesn't really sink in to the students i think they could really benefit with some more structured time with the different supervisors um, to really learn how to do the archival processing that we want them to do um, and i would also like if SCUA was more involved in the library-wide orientation thing but one one day um, <laughs> Thank, thank you. That's it. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I have a quick question. Patrick, do they do the modules like physically with y'all? Like, are they at work when they do them or do they do it on their own time and then they come in and do work? They, they we do ask them to do it when they're here. Uh, when, well, when they're at the library um at work we I don't ask them to do it on their own time that's usually the, the first thing that they'll do as well as their fire tour which carolyn um championed um <laughs> those are their their first day assignments okay that makes a lot of sense really cool so um shared in the chat each section of tech services trains our student worker for task completions i have a set order of operation for processing invoice if the student misses a step, I can pick up mistakes early and make corrections. That's really awesome. Thank you, Sharice. So I'm just reading. Charlie, how Charlie asked, how much are you able to keep up with them after they move on? Uh, more specifically, how many continue with their LIS, keep in touch later on, et cetera? Oh, I, I can speak at least for access services. We are trying to sort of ramp up our social media. A lot of times students will kind of friend the staff that they um, get to know really well online on various social media platforms. But we do have a Facebook and a Twitter for our student employees. And then we also have an Instagram, which was originally created just for the desk employees. And it's pretty much just desk stuff. But um, any student employee in our department is welcome to join it. Um, and especially through the Facebook kind of group, we do try to keep up with people and they'll post stuff. I know 24-5 has their own Facebook Messenger chat. So 24-5, if you aren't familiar, is what we refer to our third shift, um, since it is just the overnight shift when we're open 24 hours, five nights a week. And Mary Ann um, Graham and Jennifer Morrow are the staff who work those lovely late night shifts. And so they get to be really close with the students because you have to really like those shifts to work those shifts. And so I know they do a really great job of keeping up with students, but it kind of just depends on the staff member and how much the student, you know, kind of wants to engage after they move on. Well, looks like Patrick is saying he was surprising, um, surprising and how nice many students keep in touch with school folks. It is kind of cool to see people years later. And I know that I still am friends with other student employees on Facebook and other social media things from when I was a student. And in fact, um, when I came back to the library uh, and was walking around campus one day, I saw a former coworker of mine in the registrar's office who is also working at the university now, and she is working in the department that does, um, oh shoot, no, I can't think of the word because I'm talking in front of people, um, <laughs> where if you need help with a subject and they have students tutors, there we go, she's over student tutoring in that department. So it's kind of cool that we both had student employee jobs and then we're able to come back. 
Yay. Um, Charlie says many of those I've interfaced with have been awesome. And Amanda says I'm friends now with student employees I used to manage, which is really cool too, how you kind of grow and develop those friendships and relationships over time. It's nice. It's a it's more than just like a business network, you know. Um, you kind of create a personal network too with the people that you work with as a student employee. Well, if anyone else wants to talk about what you do in your department, feel free. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide, just kind of being conscious of time. Um, but if you still want to type stuff, go ahead and add that in the chat. Ooh. Okay, so training to working transition. I went too far. Sorry. Um, out of the frying pan. So training is done. What happens now? Um, are there common things that you run into and the training wheels come off? Do you do check-ins, follow-up assessments, um, staggered or tiered training? I think it's really cool how Jenny was talking about they do their large training section and then they have weekly um, subject-specific training. That's awesome and I wish that we could do something a little bit more <laughs> hands-on like that um, in our department if we could get that together. That would be really cool. Uh, currently, um, there is almost always a learning curve of some sort of scale for all newly trained student employees, even the student employees who uh, seem to have like incredible memories and can remember stuff right off the bat and are kind of ready to jump in and start doing things. So, so have a few things that they need to be reminded about or need to pick up on um, once they actually begin the job. Um, it runs the gamut from people who pick it up right away to people who just even after a few weeks, a month or so, just really aren't getting with the program. And we might have to um, kind of assess where the issues are coming from and um, figure out, OK, let's retrain them on this and kind of give them a chance to relearn some of the things. Um, most often what we hear from our student employees is that things made sense when they were in training, but when they went to do it, your mind kind of goes blank. I remember personally when I finished my stacks training as a student employee, I went into the sort room my first day and I had an assignment and I could not remember what that meant. And so I had to ask one of the other students in there and I was like, I don't remember what it was. It was probably sorting or something like that. And I was like, I don't remember what this means. And they were like, oh, okay, it's just this. And then once they started to explain it, it was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I remember how to do that. But it was just the, those nerves of like, oh my goodness, I'm starting the job. It kind of took a second for it to gel. Um, there are some standard things that people typically have issues with in our department. Um, a lot of times newly trained students will miss some of the discharging steps and discharging is checking books in or like fancy word for that if you didn't know um there are books that go certain places in the sort room and books that go on certain carts in the sort room and they'll get those mixed up um or if they're checking in dvds sometimes they won't remember to lock them before they shelf them which is how we end up with unlocked dvds on the shelves sometimes um they a lot of times i found have trouble either remembering how to look up reserves in the catalog or remembering the difference between the personal reserves, which are things that faculty have given us their own copies of to put on reserve and the books um, from the library itself that are on reserve. And, you know, having worked here for a long time, it's like, how do you mix those up? One of it has a call number and the other one has like random letters and numbers and words and stuff on it. Like they look very different, but if you're a student, you might not be 100% sure what that difference is. Um, okay, I will say I just saw Patrick's comment about the students being afraid of destroying old things. I will confess, I have a very, very mild irrational fear of touching old books, which is very ironic for someone who kind of works in a library, but I am that same, like, I don't want to touch it because I'm afraid if I touch it, it's going to like explode and be lost forever. So <laughs> I'll say, you know, when we did a move the other summer and we were moving books around the second floor and you just had to grab books, that was really good at helping you get over that. Um, but yeah, I totally get that. And then, um, you know, just little like little nitty gritty things a lot of the times um, they won't remember right off the bat and it may have to take a while for them to learn. 
Um, student employees often ask their peers for help, which we super encourage them to talk, not just to their peers, but also to staff. We try to make it really clear that, you know, just because we're staff doesn't mean that we remember everything all the time. I know I don't. Um, and we've, a lot of us have been in their situation before. We would much rather that they ask a question and figure out how to do it than not remember how to do something and guess and be wrong and we have to try to fix it later. So thinking about what you do in your departments, do you do check-ins? Um, do you have kind of staggered or tiered training? Like something we've been thinking about and thinking about how we want our training is maybe doing all the things that happen the most often first and then maybe later on once the students are working, teaching them about things that don't happen quite as often, but they still kind of need to know about. Does anybody else do anything like that? Um, yeah, go for it. If you want to talk, um, type in the chat. Do you do follow-up assessments maybe just to see what they're retaining? Anything like that? Or if anybody has any particular issues with the training to working transition, feel free to chat about it. So as people are putting stuff in the chat, I'm going to go back to some comments um, that people said about that. Um, you got to Patrick's. Uh, Jenny mentioned Leanne does a great job with giving new and sometimes returning it as feedback on their chat reference. Um, Rachel wonders, I guess, about how to balance trying to help intern students while acknowledging that it might not be my place. A lot of people said that's a tough balance. Jenny pointed out, I think it's always good to help, especially to correct and accurate info, but sometimes the students interns get pretty defensive. Um, and if other people have stuff in chat or want to unmute themselves, feel free. Oh, yeah, I guess I, I don't know if everyone can hear me. Um, sorry, I, I struggle with, this is Rachel, um, with um, people, people in ROI often will, many people will read past chat transcripts and we'll give particularly students feedback on that. I personally get offended <laughs> when people try to offer me feedback on my chats because like I'm a professional and I'm doing right. So I don't wanna ever like offend an intern. So I'm just trying to figure out when are the moments where something truly needs to be said or if it's something where you should just sort of stay in your lane. Like, I don't know. So Rachel, I feel like I can respond to that and I'm sure this happens in lots of other departments as well. <clears throat> um, uh, you know, I, I try definitely sounds like with um, what Lois is saying um, and Amanda just said this too, it is, it's hard to give feedback. Mm -hmm. It puts people on the defensive. Like most of us don't love to get constructive criticism, even if we feel like we're open to it. It's like, a little bit of a, a wound right there as we're trying to get get through it. So I talk to interns kind of constantly. <laughs> Maggie doesn't ever have to deal with that. She's good at taking constructive <laughs> feedback. Um, uh, some of the things that I work with interns on constantly is just saying over and over and over again, when people, it, we're trying to help. This is us trying to help. It's trying to help prepare you. It's trying to, um, like Rachel kind of, referenced um, striking a balance. It's sort of that balance of like, okay, we wanna help you and we wanna prepare you just like with any student assistant, but we also have a mission to be accurate and helpful with the, our patrons, right? We're still trying to like give people the correct information and help them the best we can. So we're just kind of trying to, to ask our, that's something I always ask when I interview interns. And of course, everybody's like, yes, I'm incredible at getting feedback. Um, I am so great at accepting feedback. And that's not always the case. Most people really aren't, you know, in real life that way. But um, yeah, it's it's really tough. But yeah, like Leanne is saying, we we try to say again over and over, like sometimes multiple times a day to interns, like we're trying to help. Feedback you get is is feedback that's us trying to help you and not us trying to uh, tear you down or um, insult you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a hard professional lesson to learn. So yeah, I get that. Yeah, and I, I agree with Amanda. Even though you know it's a big part of my job, it's making sure that students are doing what they're supposed to be doing. You don't want to call people out and. Working at the desk, you don't always have the opportunity to 
like have people step back and to talk with them. We try to do that when it is possible. But if you know you've got a line of patrons and you don't want to call people out in front of the patrons, but you might just have them kind of step to the side and say, hey, next time make sure you print that receipt or something like that. I usually try to balance it when I can with pointing out things that they're doing right and things that they're doing a really good job with. So that way the only feedback that they get isn't negative. Because sometimes in any kind of situation with your supervisor or whatever, if all you're getting is negative feedback and they're not telling you what you're doing well, you have no idea what you're doing well and that can make it really hard. Um, so Patrick is talking about um, employees are managed by different folks. We notice something that needs correcting, they usually go to that student supervisor first, so that way they can talk with the student. Um, we, again, are kind of unique in that um, we have almost all of our staff, well, I think all of our staff work at the desk at some point with the student, so when they're on the desk with the student, they're supervising them and making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and so our staff have more opportunities to talk to the students, and it would be kind of hard for only the um, like actual student supervisors to talk to the students. So we really rely on our staff to kind of help out and make sure that we're all doing the right things. Yeah. That's very true, Amanda. There are different ways that our lead students train. And that is something that I know that in my department we really need to work on is getting our student lead students on board with making sure that they know what they're supposed to be training um, the new students on and what we expect out of them. We've kind of done our lead students dirty in recent semesters because we've been really rushed in trying to get students on boarded and we're just kind of like, hey, you know, how to go teach somebody and that's not the tools that the lead students need. Um, so it sounds like there's always a supervisor, at least a lead student working with student boys at the desk, yes. We typically um, will have two staff and two to three students during like busy hours um, or one staff with a couple of students. Um, that way, A, it kind of makes it more fair in our staff that everybody has to help out at the desk. And also um, it gives students somebody there because you know their direct supervisor might be at lunch or might be in a meeting or something like that um typically we don't leave students alone unless like we're going off to go help somebody we also have two student desk managers um and those are student employees but we treat them um as far as like scheduling and everything like staff so they'll have desk hours with the students as well parents or maybe staff so yeah, so it looks like different departments have different staffing situations. And that is, there are also a lot of things that we do that only staff can do, like having certain passwords and making exceptions and things like that. So there does typically need to be a staff around just in case something comes up. We try to get across that the students are supposed to be really the first kind of responders when patrons come up. Some students are better at that than others. Some staff are better at that than others. I know I'm really bad if I see somebody coming up to the desk. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go help them. And then I have to sometimes sit back and think, OK, no, like let the students have a chance, Lois. Like you don't have to like get up for every person that walks up. Not everybody's like that. Um, some students don't really want to help out. When patrons come up to the desk and you kind of have to, you know, prod them along to get them to help. Yeah. All right. Oh, just look at any of us. If you're ever unsure of who to look at to come help you at the desk, we're all supposed to be helping you. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and even if we're passing through or, you know, it's we're switching shifts or something, we'll make sure that you're taken care of. All right, so because we are running close to time, um, and that's fine to come over from tech lending. Tech lending is about to totally like get shaken up anyway, probably. Um, the Super Lab is taking over the um, laptops and iPads and stuff this summer, so who knows if that's even going to look the same. Probably, but it just won't be as busy. <laughs> I like I like the rebelness. Um, that's okay. Patrons do it all the time too. All right. So future of training. Ah, Canva. Um, so 
I am going to pop over and show y'all what we are working on with our um, Canvas training. Let me just pull that up. And so what happened was Juanita and Amanda, I believe, kind of were talking about student employee training. I have been thinking about student employee training because I knew that we needed to update things. And um, I believe Juanita kind of came to me and said, hey, let's work together and update this. Juanita and Amanda are Stacks Assistant Desk Managers, and so they know more of the Stacks side of things, but they also have desk hours and they do lots of desk oriented things like Amanda does the searching, at least for now. Um, and she has her own kind of cabal of student searchers. Um, and so she's got student supervisor experience in that way. And um, Juanita does um, student supervisory experience as well. And so we were talking and so we formed a committee and then when Alex um, came on board, then she's also a student um, or an assistant desk manager at Access Services. And so we included her and we are trying to bring our training into, if if not the 21st century, at least the 20th century, um, and make it a lot more multimodal. So having videos, um, presentations, screencasts, um, and sort of smaller assessments to kind of not to be punitive and say, oh, you didn't pass that, so now you can't work here, but to say, okay, so, you know, you've just watched the screencast about how to do this specific task, take this little assessment, and then the lead students can look at that in real time and say, okay, yeah, this is right, or this is what you missed, and this is why, let's look at that together and kind of gauge where they're at. So this is what um, our Canvas looks like right now. Um, and at first, this pre-training information is what I send to the students um, when they, I first contacted them before they even get started on their stacks training. And so this introduction um, has just like a little welcome page. This is the video that we made um, that shows about our department and about the library. Um, they also go on a tour, but that kind of introduces that to them before they go on the tour. And then like, you know, homepage. This is that customer service guide I was talking about. Um, the Student Employee Professional Development Committee kind of took this over. And I think a couple summers ago, we um, updated some of the customer service um, information. And so these are videos from the library streaming option about different um, ways to help people this dealing with difficult customers is especially funny. So. Um, we also have stacks things. We've got really good stacks stuff up there right now. Um, I've been working on the handbook info and review. Um, and to answer Patrick's questions, we are working on doing the screen videos ourselves. Um, that is part of what our committee is trying to work together on because a lot of our stuff is kind of esoteric, even if it you know is dealing with using WMS the way that they might do something on the like WMS training videos from the company itself might not be exactly how we want the students to do it or they might have different permissions they might see different interface so we want to make it as realistic for them as possible and as close to what they're actually going to be doing um, and then we also have so for the desk students right now I mainly just have um, we've got the memos that we give them, um, some information here, because they can also, we're also using this as a, like a resource landing page for them so that they can, um, the desk contact list is all the students and their um, phone numbers. So that way, if somebody's going to be out, they can call uh, another desk student to come in and substitute for them, schedules. And then these are our current training checklists and supplemental materials, which you can see is a whole lot of stuff. And every time we change a process or procedure, we have to update all of this stuff. So the more we can put things online and the easier it can be to not just train students, but to update materials would be awesome. And I know that people are working and I want to be um, respectful of everybody's time. So at this point, I am just going to turn 
everything over to y'all. If there um, any ideas you have for how uh, how to make things easier to train with, um, any websites or educational materials that please, I'm still reading this. Okay, apparently my mom is here, so that's fun. Um, Y'all go ahead and um, <laughs> people's moms, people's kids, talk. people's pets. It's great. Um, um, Y'all go ahead and talk through everything you want to talk through, and I'll be right back. So, if anyone has uh, anything they want to put in, um, Jenny, I'll start putting in the links to the assessment and stuff. Yeah, that'd be great, Sam. Thank uh, you. Say anything about the next session. I'll get those links ready. Bye. Yes. So. Um, Thank you all so much for coming. This is our second uh, community presentation. Um, my camera on, so I feel more connected. Um, our second one, our first one was on Friday with Leah talking about finding high quality health information, and that's going to be on our LibGuide pretty soon. Uh, as soon as Sam and I get the recording for this one, we will also process it. Um, and put it on that LibGuide where we are keeping recorded sessions. Um, and then uh, that is also where our calendar is, so you can see things coming up. I am literally scheduling new things uh, every day. I've scheduled several things for the next couple of weeks for this virtual learning community. I'm really excited, and I really want to thank all of you for being willing to participate and being um, so great with this discussion format. I feel like I learned a lot. Uh, Lois, I think you did an awesome job. And um, I now I'm like having a lot of canvas envy. You, it sounds like maybe Patrick is as well. So maybe we need to step it up. All right, everyone. So thank you again, Lois, and thank you all. Like Rachel said, please come to the pet party tomorrow at 1.30. After you do that, I would love to encourage you to uh, sign up to participate in the Canvas discussion. Again, back to Canvas, this is different though, um, which is gonna be led by Amanda and Juanita about gaming and gamers. I'm excited. Several of you have signed up already. <laughs> um, hi to uh, your mom, Lois, that's really nice. Um, so uh, yes, and I'm so excited about that. So we're trying something asynchronous tomorrow. So something kind of like this, but not all at the same time. Um, and we're just trying out different formats. So I'm doing a pretty straight up presentation on Wednesday about algorithms of oppression. On Thursday, uh, Leanne and I are doing trivia with Kahoot. It's gonna be great. Um, and then on Friday, we had a session with Claire Heckel talking about the Digital Library of American Slavery. And one of the things she's gonna do there is talk about um, opportunities for helping with that project while people are working remotely. So we do have a sign up form, which has lots of uh, our schedule, well, has I think all of our scheduled ones um, on there for people to sign up for. Um, and then we would love to have you fill out our uh, assessment link. Sorry, I'm kind of, so I should have written a script for this uh, assessment link um, and uh, give us your feedback or feel free to always contact me or Sam um, and tell us if you um, have ideas or especially if you're interested in leading a session. I think I'm going to try to get Lois to do another one um, about a book that she recommended uh, about designing for the way people think. I think that's something like that. Um, so we're still looking for people, um, but thank you all again so very much. I know it's four o'clock now, so I will stop talking. Uh, well, we really appreciate you, especially Lois, but also everyone else who is hanging out and engaging in this conversation. So thank you all so much.